Hey everyone, it's Stephanie and you're tuned in to the review of Married at First Sight Season 7, Episode 15. So, we are army crawling to the end. I'm so happy that they scaled it back um, to one hour. This, see, this week was one hour. Sorry for the late post, but besides it being a crazy week, I've been battling a cold all week, so I can barely talk, but I'm starting to feel better. So, let's just jump into it. This week we find them actually engaging in their mini moon. So the point of this mini moon is for them to experience each other on a trip in a different way because the first time that they went on a honeymoon together, they had met the night before. So, or you know, two days before. So they really didn't know each other now. They're more comfortable. They've gone through a lot of things together. And it's also like a really good time to get away from the nuances of the day to day and spend time focusing on each other right before decision day. So um, we see me and Tristan, it's kind of kind of pointless to really talk about them. The one thing I will say is just, when you're talking to people or talking to a loved one, um, cause I'm gonna pull a message out, <laughs> despite the me and Tristan, you know, show, um, is really pay attention to body language. So body language actually speaks much more loudly than uh, what we say and as we watch them I mean because we know the end result we we can see it but like even if we didn't know the end result like the way that they respond to each other physically is very very telling so if you're ever in a space with someone where you aren't really sure that what they're saying is authentic to how they really feel or their words don't match up with what they're you know showing or actions are the opposite of what they're saying really really pay attention to body language because the way that someone um, sits in their body or some of the things they do or don't do and this is some stuff that you can even like get to study or it might be some stuff that's like very obvious you can totally tell that they're not authentic and the thing that comes up for me watching you know me and Tristan was when she was like so excited to be back after they had talked after she walked in and said you know she wanted him to um, say to stay and all of these things she was so coward in the way that she hugged him and almost like hiding but I think she was like hiding from herself hiding from the reality that she doesn't really want to be with him she just doesn't want to not be with him or she doesn't want to fail um, so really pay attention to what people say um, and something else that we can learn from them is don't throw out the divorce word or don't throw out any type of threat hoping that someone is going to give you, you know, another response. Like, you need to be authentic about what you say and how you say it, especially when we're dealing with marriage or any type of relationship or, or your feelings. You cannot throw things out hoping that someone says something opposite, hoping that, you know, it'll capture you back in. That's not really fair. Everyone doesn't work that way. So if you're dealing with someone who is taking you at face value, then what they hear is what you said, and that's just it. So when she said, you know, I, I was hoping you'd tell me to stay, it blew my mind and the reality is despite it being me and Tristan you know how many of us show up in this way in our relationships or in our day-to-day -day where we say something hoping that it will prompt someone to give us the response that we want versus the reality and the response of what we have said you know it's okay that people respond to what you say because that's what you said and so that's something that I would take just be honest about how you express yourself and don't express yourself hoping that it'll trigger a different type of reaction or hoping they'll respond in a different way because that's just not really grown up or healthy communication style. So that's that. I will jump into Bobby and Danielle. Bobby and Danielle, you know, I don't really have much to say about them. What continues to frustrate me <laughs> with them, excuse me, is the, the baiting that Danielle does um, for Bobby's affection. So, um, we'll see that Danielle actually likes the affection that she gets from Bobby. Um, she'll bait him with questions or, you know, she'll do the scale of one to 10 or she will really soak up his experience of her and how he feels about her. And she just continues to give nothing in return. And we find that happen. You know, they enjoy each other on their honeymoon. They go fishing, you know, she tries something new and, you know, they're, they're, they enjoy really the casual stuff. They just have a good time together. But then they eat and they're talking about, you know, how the first time they were together, it was kind of new and you're just trying to figure out people's traveling styles and get to know the person and it's just a lot all at once. And Bobby really, once again, pours out his heart to her. And 
there's nothing. And, and like I said many videos ago, she doesn't have to say I love you if that's not what she feels, but I do feel like she owes him something. She owes him some sort of emotion, especially since she says she has, has them. And if she doesn't, give those, then she shouldn't expect for him to give them or she shouldn't really bait them um, the way that she does. It's kind of like if you're not going to give it, then you really shouldn't, you know, require that somebody else gives it. So it's frustrating for me to watch her like really soak it in or even ask him. And then he does so lovingly, so genuinely, and she doesn't give him anything in return. Um, and this shows just how huge her lack of communication is and how emotionally blocked she is because she's not sharing anything. I mean, we've watched time and time again, and it happens again a couple of nights ago where she really just sits there with a stupid grin on her face and there's nothing there. And to me, it's a lot of people are saying, well, she's emotionally, you know, stunted or maybe she's not ready, but okay, then why, why even do this experiment is where I'm at with it. Because you're doing such a major experiment. You're meeting someone at the altar, you get legally married and then you want to play it safe. Like if you are uncomfortable with sharing your emotions and I get it, people are at different places. You know, we have different upbringings. I get it. But like, she really hasn't pushed herself as far as I'm concerned, besides actually being on the experiment, she has not pushed herself at all. She has not followed directives the way that she should have you know she wrote the letter but she did the part of it that was comfortable she did not execute the part that would you know make her uncomfortable and challenge her to share her emotions and she just continues to sit there and you know he he I think is he has this like silent rage it's not coming out as rageful but I'm picking up on the fact that this episode he's like you know I'm just gonna I don't know if she loves me because my wife hasn't told me so. And that's kind of how we start to get when we're not completely, you know, direct in our anger. We're a little passive aggressive or we get a little sarcastic and that stuff starts to build. And then that's when you spaz out. So I hope that, you know, maybe off camera something's happening with the two of them or she just gets to a point where she's um, mature enough to get over herself and just get uncomfortable. You know, you've, you've done this experiment like you know, the jig is up. Let's not pretend that this is not some major thing. Like go all the way, go balls to the walls. And she's not really doing that. So it just frustrates me to see kind of someone who's doing all of that and, and is paired with, you know, this person who's not. And I just don't think it's fair. So, you know, that's just my, that's my take on them. It doesn't really um, negate that in, in a lot of ways they are a good match and they they work well together but you know there's still a lot to be uncovered um individually and then as a couple so that's danielle and bobby they'll be together I, i'm pretty sure it'll work out um i just hope that he gets something out of it because that will get old if it's not you know given if if that affection or that word of affirmation isn't given that will get old and then it plants the seed of resentment so you know, that would be my only feedback for her. Um, so that is Bobby and Danielle. And now we have uh, Dave and Amber. So Dave and, watching Dave and Amber this, this episode really annoyed me. Dave really pissed me off, okay? Because <laughs> Dave, we, you know, for, for every video, I feel like, I feel like on some, some videos I've liked Amber, some I've liked Dave. I feel like I'm pretty even keel with them. You know, where, where Dave steps up and he does well, I say that. When Amber steps up and she does well, I say that. Where they struggle, I've said that they struggle. Um, but I'll go back to kind of what I've been saying about Dave is I feel like Dave is a control freak. And so he's very regimented and very judgmental and things should go the, the way they, they go. Um, what happens with them is they're having like a glass of wine and Amber is really seeking this validation. Now, Amber has her own issues. Amber is, you know, she has her insecurity and that gets in the way a lot. Um, and it prompts her to maybe, you know, ruminate in some things that may not even be a thing, but it is in her, her mind. So she has this insecurity that he's not really committed to her, but he isn't, you know, he, he's not really committed to her. And I love that Dave's friend last episode was so smart in saying like women are very intuitive. There's something she is picking up on and it's very accurate that he's really not committed, you know, to brag about having sex with her every day, you know, but to be at a five like why don't you be on the fence you know the side of the fence where no sex is like I, I really would say don't take advantage of all of these great things about her if you're just going to continue to you know judge her or say well you know I don't 
really know or every time she does something you question her as a mother or you question her as a person or you question her as someone who can handle stress but then you brag about having sex all the time it, it's just like because he said it so many times it's it's become like a real creepy douchey thing because you know okay you're married you guys are having sex like why do we have to keep hearing about it especially for someone that you on on many occasion feel somewhat lukewarm about so that irritates me but you know i feel like the sex thing can be a control thing because the way that I imagine it is she's giving her all, everything, you know, that she can give to show that she's worthy of being kept and that's sex too. And he's, you know, taking advantage of that. Um, so that's one. Not that she's doing it because she has to. She wants to. But the way that it's coming off is, you know, I feel like there's something that's a little off about that. So that's one. Two, um, he, you know, she asks, hey, if if we weren't committed to, to this process, would you want to be here with me? It's a really simple thing. It really is simple. What she wants to know is, you know, do you enjoy me enough to be here right now without having to be, without being on Married at First Sight? And he takes it and he runs with it. And I'm sure that they've had this conversation a, m a bunch of times. I'm sure that he's frustrated and in some ways rightfully so. But I think that, you know, he could have just thrown her a bone like going back to the conversation that his friend had who's married you know he says hey sometimes just say what the person needs to hear sometimes people need um you know that affirmation and you just give it to them and it's not lying but you know just throw your spouse a bone we if you're in a relationship or you're married you know that there's sometimes sure i'll go see that movie sure i'll come watch the game do i really go want to go watch the game no you know, like, but I'll go, I'll have fun, I'll ask questions. I, do I really care about that movie? Maybe not, but you just kind of go because it is what it is. It's not really that everything can't be a thing. And I think what she wanted to hear, and if he was in tune with women, period, or her, he would understand that all she really wants is to know, do you enjoy me enough to just want to be here? And that's it. And he took it and he ran with it and then he turned into... A complete douchebag for most of the episode he you know he felt like he was being pushed to commit and and push to say something that he wasn't ready to say now that I do understand he did make one really good point about him going through the process and the way that he was going through it and for her not to push and I could see that I could see Amber kind of wanting to hear what she wanted to hear when she wanted to hear that so I completely agree with Dave that you know she needs to allow him to experience the process that he's experiencing in the way that he can but besides that there's still some grace that you can have in experiencing that process and you can still make someone feel good and show that you care um and still kind of not be sure what you have going on but you know i found his um lack of communication to be extremely um childlike to be um, extremely controlling, extremely manipulative. Um, and the fact that they laughed about it at the end, like really irritated me because that was just like, oh my God, here's where the like manipulative mental abuse starts. And I'm going to throw that out there because I feel like if that goes on, that's what it'll become, especially with someone that you know, really struggles in that space. I think if you really are with someone and you love them, you're not trying to torture them or you're not utilizing the things that you know about them um, to hurt them and there's a way that he could have gone about that without you know just turning into a complete jerk and shutting down and saying whatever and I don't care now I got to a point where I was annoyed with Amber at that point because I felt like girl stop like just have a little pride like clearly he doesn't want to talk about it clearly he's not gonna want to say what, what you want to hear and you shouldn't really want to hear him say that um, you know, because you're demanding that he says it. So just knock it off a little bit. But she's so desperate just to hear like, hey, I do want to be with you, period. Or I do enjoy this time with you enough that if we weren't on Married at First Sight, yes, I, I could. I could be with you. And for people who are like, well, maybe he couldn't. Well, but he says he has sex with her all the time. He's not pulling back on that. He's not saying because I'm not ready, I don't want to answer about sex. I don't want to have sex yet because I'm not really sure I want to be with you. But all these other things, that's when he's pumping the brakes. It's a control thing. It's domineering. And it's like so obnoxious. And I, I almost, if she doesn't get it together and he doesn't get it together, because I've always said that they have individual work to do to really 
be a good couple because I think that they have the potential watching that um, scene and then the casual ha 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 you're being a jerk and I was being a jerk and that really like gave me pause on if I think that he's really good for her in the state that she is in right now I think that she is too weak in herself and that's not like a judgment I just feel like there's some weaknesses that you really need to work on before you um, get matched with anyone in life you know um, I feel like she's too weak right now because she just has so many insecurities to really be able to stand up to someone like that who is so regimented in who he is and believes that you know he's right most of the time um, I think that that type of person would like ruin her right now or she would allow that person to ruin her right now so watching that scene gave me pause for cause because I just was like okay this this is so regardless of because me and my husband talked about it and he said you know he, obviously he wouldn't have gone about that you know gone about it that way but he understood the need for something different to kind of like stop the same wheel from spinning but you know then we talked about there are better ways to do that there's a, a way that you can express yourself and in some ways where Dave feels like he's the sane one and he knows he knows what he knows and he's ready for this and she's not ready and she has this and she has that like you're not ready actually Dave because you really don't even know how to communicate effectively regardless of if you're tired of communicating about it we've all been there where we're like I'm over this conversation I've had it a hundred thousand times I'm not doing this it's fine to say that but the way that he was doing it was just it was manipulative and it was in recognition of knowing what it'll do to her like I'm not I don't think he's oblivious in recognizing what it'll do to her and to not have any other skill set to pull from than this just made me think that she's she might be better off without him and I'm a hope I'm a hopeless romantic I love love I always want to say you know that they end up together but I also think that you know what's the goal here is it to be married and just say I'm married or is it to have like a fruitful relationship and something that adds value and nourishes you as a person and helps you to grow and you actually build something together and right now I'm not seeing it so that is my two cents on Dave and Amber um I don't I don't really know that 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 exchange really bothered me and it it just it just didn't feel good watching that and it really didn't feel good how they you know walked past that and I think Amber's kind of desperate for that uncomfortable space to move on so she'll laugh it off but over time that will really damage her and I damage that relationship so that is um, that's it for for Amber and Dave <laughs> I mean let me know what you guys think also so super cool um, I uh, was introduced to the photographer for this season she reached out to me her name is Nat I cannot remember her last name but I will put it in this video you'll see it pop up and um, she reached out to me and she sent me a link to the photographs for Bobby and Danielle's wedding so she, she did an amazing job she was able to shoot all three weddings but she sent the link to Bobby and Danielle so I wanted to share it with you guys she's a phenomenal photographer the, these photos are breathtaking and she wanted to share it with you as well as share it with me and so I'm going to put the link here and you guys go check it out check out her work and also don't forget to subscribe and comment and I will see you next week everyone have a great week